The tech job market is so bad right now. I've talked to dozens of software engineering graduates with 4.0s who can barely sniff an interview. Just a few years ago, these kids would have had a handful of really prestigious internships and graduated with a six-figure job. But now with the number of open software engineering jobs at a record low, it's harder than ever to land a job. The competition is much steeper than it ever was and you have to do a lot more to stand out to land a role. My name is Nabil and I'm a senior technical product manager at Amazon who's helped dozens of people land interviews and roles at big tech companies like Amazon, Apple, and more. And if you're looking to land either your first role or you were just laid off, I'm here to help. I've actually interviewed, hired, and managed teams of software engineers, product managers, technical program managers, and there's a few key things I've seen the successful candidates do that I think you should do too. Number one is to learn to sell yourself. It sounds extremely obvious, but I've talked to big tech recruiters who said their number one issue is getting candidates to properly sell themselves for roles. Just think about that for a sec. Candidates are struggling to land interviews and when they do, they're struggling to convey why they actually deserve the job. And on the other hand, recruiters are feeling the same way. They're struggling to get the information out of you to tell you why you're a fit for the job too. The reality is it's your responsibility as a candidate to be able to showcase your skills and just demonstrate why you're relevant for that position. I've seen a ton of business owners and early graduates make the mistake of being too generic with the skill set they describe. Oftentimes this occurs when the person doesn't have a strong depth of experience in any one area and they try to make up for it by describing a bunch of adjacent skills. For example, if you're looking for a role as a software engineer, they might also mention that they have design skills or they might mention that they have product skills. While these are good to mention, you want to make sure you're conveying your true ability for the role they're hiring. The team you're hiring for is probably putting you on a pretty specific project, and so you want to make sure that you can meet those expectations before you can go and exceed them and show your other skills. When I was doing resumes, I've seen plenty of business owners who describe all the skills they have in the world, but end up overgeneralizing and just don't showcase the fact that they have the right thing for that job. So the way that I prep for interviews is by looking through my past experiences and focusing on five to seven key projects that I might have worked on that really demonstrate my skills. What I'll do is I'll go back, reflect through my experience, jot down everything I think I did. I won't even stop at just big projects. I might think about what are the small things I did day to day that actually added a lot to my experience that somebody else would hire for that I thought maybe was regular in my day to day job. So I'll go through, list everything out, show one by one. Maybe I worked on, maybe I hired 10 people. Maybe I managed a group of people. Maybe I led this new project. Maybe I created these designs, whatever it is. And then once I sort of filter through those, I'll, I'll pick the top five to seven that I think are actually relevant. And I'll start to expand on those a little bit. There's a format that's pretty commonly used in interviews called star format, which is situation, task, action, and results. And so what I do for each of these projects is I actually write out just a little bit of what the case was, what my main responsibilities were, what I actually did to make sure the project got achieved, and then the results of what happened. Within that star format, you want to spend 60 to 70% of your time on the latter half. So you want to really focus on what you did and what the results were. Oftentimes, people who have been in industry roles for a really long time make the mistake of saying we. They'll answer interview questions and say, well, the team did this, well, we did this, etc. But the reality is if you're in a new position, that company isn't hiring your old team. They're trying to hire you. And so you have to take credit for the things that you actually did and show why you'd be able to do the same thing at this new company too. You also want to make sure in both resumes and interviews that you include the right level of detail that makes sense. Oftentimes people's resumes looks like a laundry list of different actions they did. Like I wrote two documents, I talked to 10 customers, I did this, that, and the other. But the reality is the actual hiring team isn't going to understand why that's relevant. You have to make it clear. You have to add a little bit of context to the story to make it clear as to what the actual impact of that was. Now there's a little bit of a fine line. You don't want to go too overly broad to where you don't describe what you did. Again, we don't want to focus on what we did or what the team did. You want to describe your actions, but you don't want to be so granular at the bottom where you're just showing actions rather than actual impact. If I look at an example of one of the bullet points on my resume, I will say, for example, that I developed and executed a go-to-market strategy for a critical new product, overseeing a team of 30 plus engineers and TPMs, 
prioritizing features based off customer data analysis, and collaborating with partner stakeholders to forecast growth strategy. There's a format that a lot of companies use called XYZ format for resumes, which is you accomplished X by Y amount by doing Z. You'll see in those bullet points that I mentioned that I really talked about all three. I added some of the metrics that were relevant to the case, such as managing a group of 30 engineers. And then I also talked about what I actually did. So that way the actions I described, such as talking to stakeholders, etc., are put in that broader context. The second idea is to learn skills that set you apart. And look, it's become pretty common knowledge nowadays that a computer science degree oftentimes focuses a lot more on the actual theory of computer science rather than hard software engineering skills. While this is a really good foundation to have and it does make people better coders, if you want to land a software engineering job, you have to show people that you're actually good at coding. To do that and stand out from other people, this might mean that you go through a couple of extra certifications. There's a ton of platforms like Udacity, Coursera, etc. that actually walk you through the process of getting these certifications and enable you to work on projects that will build your portfolio. There's also a ton of open source projects that are available that you can use to leverage and build your GitHub profile. It's important that you actually practice the hard skills of what you're going to do in the job so that people have a good body of work for you to see. For product managers, one of the biggest sets of skills that actually sets people apart is having technical acumen. I see a ton of aspiring product managers in MBA schools who have a lot of business skills, but have little to no practical application and little to no technical skill. If you were to take one of these people and plop them into a software job, a lot of the times they don't necessarily actually have the skills, which is why they're struggling to get the job. Working on skills such as SQL, database technology, and entry-level programming can go a long way for a product manager because you significantly increase your ability to actually have conversations with engineers. Even for designers, the same thing is the case. You wanna make sure you have a really good portfolio to start, but having flexibility in the tools you use like, like InDesign and Figma enable you to have a wide breadth of skills that you can bring to your customer. See, tech is one of those fields that unfortunately you can't learn one time and just forget about. You have to actually keep up with the trends of what's going on. A great way to do this is to follow prominent influencers on LinkedIn or Twitter to see what technologies they're using. You'll see a ton about what companies are actually doing in the startup space or at the broad scale, which actually will add a ton to your knowledge as well. For example, over the past couple years, AI has been super important and the revolution started with a couple of key startups, which Gen actually got acquired by larger tech companies. Now, there's a ton of tech companies like Facebook, Amazon, and Google who are hiring AI product managers or engineers to support the models that they built from startups. So it's all really interconnected and you have to make sure you keep up with it. The last core tip is to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. With the number of open technical jobs at record lows right now, interviews are few and far between, so you have to make the best out of every opportunity that you get. Be honest with yourself. If you were looking for a job right now and you had an interview tomorrow, would you be ready to do it? Do you feel like your skills are up to date? And do you feel like your interview practice is where it needs to be? If not, that's okay, but you need to start practicing interviewing like it's a part-time job tomorrow. You wanna make sure your behavioral interview skills are fresh, you have the technical expertise you need, and you've practiced the specific type of problems that interviews are going to ask. Sometimes these interviewing methods can be a little bit controversial, but frankly, it doesn't matter. You either want the job or you don't. For software engineering roles, most of them rely on technical challenges, and so you should be using leak code and neat code videos pretty regularly to practice those types of problems and also watch other people solve them as well. For technical program management and product management jobs, if you haven't practiced before, there's a site called Try Exponent that you can use that has tons of videos walking you through step by step how to solve the problems, but also showing you examples that you can use too. This is a really good resource, and if you're not using it, I would start today. Even for software engineering roles, they have a ton of different resources that you can leverage that will make you stand out and be a better interviewer. Another thing that goes a super long way is having solid examples of your work that you can point to. A lot of the times when I talk to some of those software engineering graduates and I ask them for examples of their work or their portfolios, they have very few rudimentary projects that they can point to. If you're looking for a job, one of the best things that you can do is spend a lot of your time actually building a really solid project. If you can show that you've used APIs, you've done front-end design, you've done database design, maybe you've worked with machine learning or maybe you've worked with other newer technologies as well. 
Having a solid core example that you can point to, but also speak about in your interviews will go a really long way. When I was hiring engineers, I actually have looked at people's projects and the ones that had really good ones did stand out more than others. This concept of having a portfolio isn't specific to software engineering or design, by the way. Even program managers and technical product managers can put together portfolios. I've done it myself. When I landed my first program management job, I had a bunch of examples put together of where I had led projects before. This helped me really land the role and showed concrete examples of what I was able to do. If you're looking for a product management job, maybe you can work with a startup or look at a product that's on Product Hunt and redesign their application. Maybe you can actually go through and write product requirement documents and three-year vision plans for those role, for those small companies. That way you have actual experience that shows you're capable of the skills that they would hire you for. Nowadays, there are hundreds of applicants submitting their resumes for basically every technical role that's out there. And so to actually land the job, you basically have to make sure you're in the top 1% of each role. This can sound kind of daunting at first, but the reality is you don't have to be an insane coding whiz or some Ivy League MBA to land one of these jobs. By having a really strong hiring profile and examples of your work, you can stand out against hundreds and thousands of applicants who simply just have a resume and are hitting submit. In fact, for people who are looking for product and design roles, I actually work with a number of startups and at a big tech company to manage product and design. By simply putting in the necessary prep work, you'll put yourself above hundreds of candidates to get you closer to your dream. I do a decent amount of product and design for startups who are looking to build their next product. If you're looking for your next opportunity or learning to design better products, subscribe to the channel and click the link in my bio for more.